Hey everyone, today we're diving into the world of Salesforce Flow, the powerhouse automation tool that's been making waves in the Salesforce world. So you've probably heard about Flow and you know it's the go-to automation tool for supercharging processes in your Salesforce org. But hold on, there's so much to know about Flow. In this video, we're going to cover everything from types of flows to the nitty gritty elements and resources that make it all click. Let's kick things off with the different types of flows. First up, we've got the screen flow. If you need to capture user input, like selecting from a list or entering text, this is your go-to. It runs in the foreground, meaning users see it in the UI. Next, the record triggered flow. Perfect for automating actions every time a user does something in Salesforce. Configure the entry criteria and it can run before or after a record is saved. For automated actions on a schedule, there's the schedule triggered flow. And don't forget the platform event triggered flow, firing off actions when a specific platform event message is received. Now, the auto launched flow, a set of actions triggered by something outside the original flow, like Apex or REST API. It sits dormant until called on by one of these other features. And there's the record triggered orchestration for multi-step, multi-user flows triggered by Flow Orchestrator. Now that we've covered the different types of flows, let's talk about the building blocks, the elements in Flow. Without these, you wouldn't be able to make a flow. First up, we've got logic elements like assignment, decision, loop, collection sort, collection filter, and the new transform element, which is currently in beta. Let's go into a bit more detail. Assignments are used to set the value of a variable in a flow. Decisions are used to separate different logical actions based on multiple sets of criteria and follow an if-then-else structure. Loops are used to perform a series of actions or checks against an entire collection of records or variables one by one. Collection filters pretty much do what they say. They filter existing collections by a specific attribute or field, with the result being a new collection that contains only the filtered variables. The last of the logic elements I mentioned is the transform element. Simply put, this element allows users to automatically map field values from an existing record or record variable to another and transform it along the way. Simple, right? Then there's the custom error element to display customized error messages if there are any sort of errors when your flow runs and data elements like create records, update records, get records, delete records, and rollback records. In the interaction category, we have screen elements for building UI interfaces, such as a login screen of a custom app. Action elements for processes outside flow, such as the process of placing an order in an e-commerce app, and subflow elements that call another flow, such as a chat application where a subflow handles the sending of images. Finally, let's touch on resources. These help you manage and manipulate data throughout your flow. Firstly, we have variables. A variable is a box that moves around your flow, contains data that can change throughout the flow, and can take one of many shapes, i.e. text, number, or record. Then there's constants. Similar to a variable, a constant is a box that moves around your flow and can take one of many shapes, but the data is set in stone and does not change throughout the flow. Formulas are used to calculate a result from multiple variables, constants, and other factors, then store the result as a variable. Text templates allow flow administrators to store text that can be used throughout a flow. Choices are used as options that users can select from within radio buttons or multi-select pick list components. Then there's collection choice sets, record choice sets, and pick list choice sets. Essentially, there are a group of variables according to their names, and the different sets are configured at different times. Lastly, Stages sequentially group a user's progress through the flow into small milestones that can then be displayed back to the user. Rather than considering each screen as a milestone, your user may navigate through multiple screens in a single stage before passing to the next one, such as two screens in a customer identity, three screens in product configuration, and two screens in payment, for example. And there you have it, a crash course on Salesforce Flow. But wait, there's more. If you want the full details, check out the link in the description for our comprehensive guide by Tim Combridge. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, happy flowing.